Hi everyone, and welcome to another tutorial by the chosen individual. Wait, wait, I haven't started this traditional way. Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. Um, thanks for stumbling across this channel now that, um, you know, I am starting to become a little popular. I just recently reviewed my statistics and I, I think I have over 50 views already, so... Clap, okay? Please, it makes me feel better about myself. So, to make up for the lack of videos because of my RBMK troubles, um, I'm going to be... Today we're going to be talking about the Xernox nuclear reactor. Now, quick fun fact before we begin. And this might help you, like it helped me at some point earlier. And is that the Xernox is actually based on a real nuclear reactor, the um, British Magnox reactor. It's basically the same, uh, it's a gas cooled reactor, so yeah. I'm not gonna go um, further deeper, in, uh, deeper into it, but you can look up Magnox on YouTube if you want to, to learn it. So, how do you operate this reactor? Well, it's pretty simple. It has an assembly machine template. So if I just uh, find it, hold on. There. So now for nuclear reactor, you need four big steel shells, four steel scaffolds, 16 concrete, eight steel pipes, four motors, eight boron ingots, 16 graphite ingots, and three advanced circuits. That's all you're gonna need for this, well, I mean, I know, a couple of those things. <laughs> So once you have it, place it down wherever you want. As you see, I have a dedicated um, containment vessel for this reactor. And right click on it to open the GUI. So here, as you can see, I've already loaded my fuel. These uh, slots over here on the left are for fuel rods. So for example, I'm using um, the uranium-235 fuel rod, which can be made with uranium-235 billets. So, yeah. I think there is like a, a process to get these, um, the like new uranium, uh, uranium enrichment plant, but I'm not entirely sure. And so down here at the bottom we have three gauges. The carbon dioxide gauge, the super dense steam gauge, and the water gauge. Now, before you do anything, grab a heavy infinite water tank and place it in here, and this gauge will start filling up. There we go, it's now full. And we need that to ensure that our reactor doesn't, you know, explode. Um, the second thing we're going to need is some carbon dioxide. Now, the amount of carbon dioxide you're going to need heavily depends on um, what type of fuel you're using. So, for example, if I'm using uranium-235, I'm going to need about... Uh, 8, 9, 10... I need about 12,000 millibuckets, okay? And so, when the... Uh, well... Maybe a bit less. There we go. 1,100 mil buckets. And you can see that up here we have more gauges which um, show us temp uh, reactor temperature and pressure. If you uh, let either of these get to here, get to the red zone, the reactor will explode. So make sure that doesn't happen. Um, now, there is a quick relation between pressure and temperature. Um, the more pressure there is, aka the more carbon dioxide there is, the less uh, heat there will be. But the less carbon dioxide, well, heat makes the carbon dioxide expand, obviously. And, well, if you vent CO2 with this valve, which bends, uh, vents 100 millibuckets of carbon dioxide, as I just showed you a couple seconds ago, um, if you vent uh, carbon dioxide, the pressure the pressure will decrease, but the temperature will increase due to um, uh, cooling effectiveness reduction. You can, yeah, here, CO2 transfers um, from the core to the water, this will pull into super dense steam. Uh, the efficiency of cooling the steam production is based on pressure. Pressure can be reduced by venting CO2. However, too low pressure and cooling efficiency in steam production will be reduced. Look out for meltdowns. So, you need to have enough carbon dioxide that your reactor is cooled enough that it doesn't explode and so that you produce a, a proper amount of super dense steam. Now, with everything that I've just talked about set up, grab some coated universal fluid ducts and we're gonna identify these with um, super dense steam. 
so identify them with super dense team okay so on the blast door and well you can use any type of turbine but I I recommend the Leviathan steam turbine because it's really really good and it also doesn't clog up like the other turbines extend your fluid ducts all the way over here connect them here and identify them with super dense steam now get another duct here or well ducts and identify this with dense steam now this one with normal steam there we go make sure to change the levers here as well so um, there we go that's now super dense steam dense steam and this will process steam um, now you may want to measure now you'll always have your electrical grid here I'm going to use an FENSU which is the best um, power storage uh, system in the entire game so let's extend some red copper cables you can make them cut it I'm gonna make them cut it so extend some um, red copper cables from the back of these turbines all the way here and well as uh, this set the most input and well as this starts to fill up well and then you'll see how much you produced you produce now get a, um, a cooling tower now I think uh, I don't know if the let me just let me just run the reactor real quick for a couple of seconds to see if no, okay yeah okay so that's safe as you can see the um, the pressure and the temperature volume will rise up but don't worry that's that's more than normal so as you can see we've already produced um, quite a bit of power you can crank uh, a lot of power from these things if you use the right setup let's put down some cooling towers oh and by the way we're also going to need um, low pressure steam um, low pressure steam there we go fluid identifier just um, grab all these and set them to um, we'll connect them all like this and get them to the turbine here it's pretty straightforward anyone can do it and then uh, set that all to low pressure steam and on the back or wherever you want you can make this more complicated for yourself if you really want set out the water output because the um, heavy infinite water tank isn't enough to sustain um, the, the reactor's water supply by itself and when the water gets to zero boom it's game over so make sure to never let the water run out send all the pipes Make sure to identify them as you go using your fluid identifier. Now, quickly just bash a hole open in your containment building and set up the water input here. And done! That should be it. Now another thing you can do is, um, instead of having this, you can have um, a big tank or something like that out here and also um, input water from there, but uh, I guess this is the most cost efficient way to use it. And now that we see that um, carbon dioxide, uh, super density and water are all set, let's close the glass door, there we go. And let's run this thing. As you can see, I've got a, a, a spent fuel pool here, and that's because I, I plan to also um, I plan to make a part two. Yes, I know again. Sorry, I plan to make a part two where I'll, I'll show you what to do with the depleted fuel. I also want to make um, a reactor safety series because I feel like there are too many meltdowns, <laughs> too many meltdowns, and I'm going to cover every single reactor and how to prevent it from melting. 
once it is turned on. Ooh. As you can see, all the gauges are barely keeping it together. We're getting uh, water. It's not going to use up carbon dioxide, so you don't need to constantly input carbon dioxide, which is good. Let's open the last door. And well, of course, heat and everything will reduce as um, the fuel rods deplete. But look. And we're getting... Oh, it doesn't actually tell me. Uh, spark. <laughs> it's kind of broken. I don't know why. We're getting 380,000 um, kilo, kilo HEs per second. That's pretty good. For early game, I feel like that is pretty good. See, we're outputting no pressure steam and putting it back into water and putting it back into the reactor. Uh, this video is 10 minutes long. I'm not gonna make it too long. I'm basically just gonna run this until the fuel depletes. But this was basically just um, a very simple idea of how to run the Xerox reactor. Now, of course, I'm pretty sure there are better setups like this. And to make it. spend about uh, well you can you can spend as much time as you want on the you know so so that's been it for now remember to like and subscribe if you have any video ideas post them in the, um, the comments down below I'll be happy to answer them and I'll see you next time this has been the chosen one oh by the way I got a new skin I play sort of skin so I'll see you next time peace out gamers also I don't know what was that random noise in the distance maybe someone yelling Someone yelling a name? That was, that was very strange. Anyways, see ya!